Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Kind of a volatile session yesterday with uh, the US 30 still closing down but off its session lows which close to 17.546. It's down again today, um, some weak data coming out of the US last, last night. Uh, has actually caused a, a rebound once again in the US, US dollar. It's, uh, it, it's weakened substantially. Big spikes in crude and gold. Uh, mainly the crude oil spike was on the back of the Iranian deal, again being delayed for a second day. Still on a bit of a knife edge right there, and obviously the dollar weakness uh, 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 kind of compounded that move as well. So we'll talk about that in a second. But um, 17,738 is potential resistance on the US 30, followed by 17,546 as support. Getting very close to that death cross we've been talking about with the moving averages. They're quite close to crossing over right now. And we are getting a pattern of lower highs on the daily candlesticks as well. Other technicals are relatively neutral with MACD just crossing the zero lines. So from a technical perspective, the US 30 is looking a little bit more um, uh, kind of negative in regards to that downward selling pressure. So so looking at the UK 100, um, very volatile session, but big turnaround in the, in the equity markets with a lot of mining, miners and oil production companies getting a shot in the arm towards the end of the session. That's why it's outperformed the US 30, quite close to death cost there as well. Um, negative today, 67.71 being potential support to be aware of. Yeah. Um, usually this candle will be a very, very strong hammer formation to have at the bottom of the downtrend like that. but. It really depends how the commodity markets uh, yeah. continue on over the next couple of days. So if the US dollar continues to lose momentum, momentum and commodities begin to increase, the UK 100 might actually have a little bit of a, a stab at staying above 67.71, be able to target 69.06 again. But that's a bit of a big ask. So moving on to Japan 225, looking at uh, dollar yen as ever, bouncing around 119. Um, yesterday we do have a kind of a hammer formation there on Japan 225. We're on the right side of the 21 period SMA, uh, still quite comfortably within this kind of uptrend there just now. So it seems to be hugging that over the last uh, five or six uh, sessions. Longer term potential support remains at 18.648 with 20,000, not that far away. Um, but looks to be um, struggling a little bit as uh, as dollar yen reverses course. As the yen strengthens, that will add a bit of a dampener to Japan 225 going forward. So where we're sitting right here, two down days now on uh, Japan to on the dollar yen. Uh, a move back towards that 119 level seems to be on the cards, which would also coincide with the 55 period SMA. Other technicals are relatively neutral, apart from the MACD is going to cross the zero line shortly, so uh, you know, 119, uh, 55 pips away right now, uh, that's probably where this is going to go ahead and settle. Moving on to West Texas crude, so big shot in the arm yesterday, up 5%, uh, it's up again a little bit today as the Iranian deal began to uh, to stall, it's going into its, its second day past the deadline. Um, some commentators seem to think that some sort of deal will be reached, but uh, other commentators uh, I've seen this this morning online are uh, are expressing uh, doubt that there's going to be any big change uh, until later on in spring. So they might delay it again and say there's still some things, things we've got to work out, and uh, that would cause a, a short-term spike up in West Texas crude. Is that you know they have already gone past that hard deadline that was set by the Americans. Uh, and they've already overshot, overshot about two more days, so it might be a case of, well, if there's still so many things to work out, uh, we should just you know, work them out. And that that would be seen as a as a positive sign for West Texas crude that potentially deal is a little bit more shaky. Nevertheless, all the other technicals are relatively neutral, but that's currently where we stand. We haven't been above the previous high of $50 on West Texas yet, uh, but a slow creep higher this morning. We're looking at gold. Uh, gold did get a massive shot in the arm yesterday on that really weak US data that came out. Uh, well, it was a, not really weak, but it was a bit of a miss there, incidentally. So um, we've now seen, as ever, those interest rate projections being revised again, at lower trajectory. Um, that first rate hike going to happen later in the year, if it does, in fact, even happen this year, the way things are going right now with all the mixed macro data coming out of the US. Uh, and you already begin to see that stronger US dollar impact a lot of their export data as well. So 1218 being potential resistance, which also coincides with the 55 period SMA. Um, and we're, we've got a little bit of upwards momentum this morning. Uh, it's, it's ticking ever so slightly higher, still in positive territory, but 1218 being the next potential resistance. And we do have a whole host of data due today, as ADP private payrolls actually that were, that came out yesterday, that's slightly 
missed the expectations. In fact, if we just go back onto yesterday, we had ADP private payrolls, and we had PMI as well. And it's the PMI data um, right here that came in slightly less than expected. Not a massive miss, but uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but a miss anyway. So finishing up with uh, Euro dollar and uh, GBP USD. So Euro dollar again, one spot 0.786 is potential support slash resistance. Also coincides with that 21 period SMA. Other technicals are relatively neutral. Uh, Euro is a little bit under pressure by potential Greek exit, albeit the finance minister of Greece has said that they will make their first payment to the IMF. Um, but the dollar has been retreating in all fronts on the back of the ADP private payroll numbers and the PMI data. And obviously we're waiting for non-farm payrolls on Friday, which is still coming out even though it is obviously the um, Easter weekend. There is a half uh, day uh, trading day in the US and non-farm payrolls is coming out as normal. So do bear that in mind if you've got open positions heading into the Easter weekend. So finishing up with GBP USD, uh, one spot 4813 has been in play for pretty much the last two weeks. Today's no different. Other technicals are are completely neutral. We're flattening out and consolidating around this level 14813 until we get a little bit more guidance from either US macro data, which is obviously disappointing, or uh, or sterling data. And we do have the election uh, coming up in 36 days, I believe, and that should have a bit of an impact on uh, sterling. While there's more uncertainty, it will, it will be a little bit weaker, but if uh, the Conservatives begin to take the bit of the lead, then uh, Sterling might take that as a positive sign. So in regards to economic data, we do have US employment data due today, trade balance data. And if we fast forward on to uh, Friday, uh, non-farm payrolls, as we mentioned, and you've got Chinese PMI data as well. So don't forget, we still have non-farm payrolls on Friday, even if you're uh, going to be out and about in the way this weekend. So as ever, keep your eye on the chart for make insights part of your late going forward. And uh, join me again next week to find out what happened next.